Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Ella if you're new here, if not then hello. With everything going on at the moment with the coronavirus and people now having to work from home, I thought that today's video I would show you 10 top tips on how to start working from home. I know that working from home can be quite daunting because you won't have the same schedule that you usually have at university, school or at your normal job, but hopefully this video will settle anyone's nerves and show you guys that you can still be really productive and effective working from home. So like I said, I have 10 tips and they range between the area that you work in, what you do at lunchtime and how to structure your day. If at the end of this video you enjoy it and you want to see some more videos like this then please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe and let's just get on into the video. So the first tip actually ties together all of the other tips and it is to pretend that you are not at home. And what I mean by this is start your day as if you were off to go to your job or off to go to university. So this means that you're going to wake up and start when you usually start and end your day when you usually end it. So if you have a nine to five job and you usually wake up at seven, you're gonna carry this structure and you're gonna wake up at seven, start all your work at nine and finish at five. This means that your brain and body would still be flowing as it normally would if you weren't working from home and it just makes sure that you can be motivated and productive as best as possible if you still carry on the routine that you usually have. So tip one, pretend that you are not actually at home and you're still in your day-to-day -day job or university or school. My second tip is really important and I know that a lot of people will ignore this but it is to put on your day-to-day -day clothes. Now although it's really comfortable working in your pyjamas it's just really not effective and this study here actually shows that the clothes that you wear influences your behaviour and your mindset. So if you put on your clothes that you usually wear to university or that you usually wear to your job it can actually influence your brain and become way more effective in doing the jobs that you're meant to be doing. Although pyjamas and comfy clothes can be really nice to relax in it's actually not very effective to work in so I really recommend putting on some clothes it doesn't mean putting on a suit or anything like that if that's what you usually wear to your job but putting on you know some jeans and a t-shirt and getting down to doing your work if you're wearing your relaxing clothes then your mind is actually going to be a lot more slow and a lot more slumped and you probably won't get as much work done so that's my second tip put on some everyday clothes My third tip is for commuters. Now I know that a lot of people commute to their job or commute to their university and they like to do productive things within those times if they're on the train or on the bus, such as reading a book. Now since we'll now be working from home, these commutes won't be needed, but I really recommend setting up an hour or so before you're meant to be starting work and doing the activities that you usually do on your daily commute, such as reading a book. Not only is it really beneficial to wake up early, but if you're doing the same activities that you'd usually do on your commute, it makes sure that your routine and your schedule is just similar to what it would be if you weren't working from home. There's also different activities that I know people do. Some people read a book, a newspaper, they might listen to music. So if you are a commuter and you're no longer having to commute, although it might be nice to have a bit more of a lie in, it would be really beneficial to wake up just a bit earlier and continue those activities. So that was my third tip for commuters to continue your activities that you usually do on your train or bus and wake up a bit earlier to do them. My fourth tip is about the environment and area that you work in. It's so important to have a clean area where you can dedicate all your work and all your study to. So you want to make sure that the area that you will designate your work to is nice and clean and also has good lighting. If you're gonna be having video calls with colleagues or with lectures, it's also really important that the background is also clean because obviously you don't want your colleagues to see a messy area that you're working in. Ideally, the area should have a desk and include a lamp for lighting and have little to nothing on the desk apart from anything that you need to work with. So that's my fourth tip. Make sure the area that you're going to be working in is clean and appropriate for a work setting. 
My fifth recommendation binds into the previous one and it is about where you'll be working. I really recommend going downstairs or going to a different room to work. Although it might seem really nice to work in your bed, I promise you that you will not be as effective as if you had a different area to work in. If you just stay in your bed the whole day with your laptop, then you're gonna really find these days really boring and unproductive. This just means that you can separate your day-to-day -day work with your relaxation time. Now, if you don't have the ability to go to a separate room to work and the only area that you can work is your bedroom, then I really recommend getting a lap desk if you don't already have a desk in the room. A lap desk has so many benefits. Not only can it really help with your posture, but it can still help you feel as if you are in an office with a desk as opposed to in your bed at home. You can get these lap desks delivered to you from Amazon or from eBay. They're not very expensive, but they will really help when it comes to working. It'll mean that you actually have to sit up to go on your laptop and do your work. So that's my fifth tip to go into a separate room to work or if you're unable to do so, get a lap desk. Moving on to my sixth tip, and this is about distractions. Now, I know that a house is full of distractions, whether you have a pet, whether, you know, the kitchen is a distraction to go get food, something like that. But I really recommend staying away from these distractions. So an obvious distraction is your phone and social media. So when you are waking up to do your work, I really recommend putting your phone outside of the room or turning it off completely so that you're not distracted by anything that's going on. If you have a pet, or any children that are now at home then I really recommend closing the door into the room that you're going to be working with and finally I know that the kitchen can be a distraction for people so I recommend trying to not go into the kitchen until it's lunchtime or the end of the day. My seventh tip is to make sure that your Wi-Fi is up to scratch. Now I know that a lot of universities and companies are giving students or colleagues laptops to now work with, but you also really want to make sure that your Wi-Fi is at the best possible speed so that you can continue your work at a really good rate. This will help you be really productive and it just means that you won't be waiting for things to load on your laptop or anything like that. There are actually websites online where you can see the speed of your Wi-Fi and if you feel that it's too slow or you need to change, then I'm sure that your provider can actually help you with this. Good Wi-Fi is really key to staying productive. If you're having a video call or if you have to send some emails, then you don't want to have to be relying on your Wi-Fi to get you through these. So that's my seventh tip. Make sure your Wi-Fi is as good as it possibly can be. My next tip is in terms of lunchtime. And firstly, I really recommend prepping your lunch the day before. I know a lot of people, when they go to university or to their jobs, they actually have a packed lunch. And I really recommend still doing this. And secondly, I really recommend only having an allocated period of lunch. So at work, if you only have half an hour or an hour lunch break, I really recommend still only taking that amount of time out for lunch. This means that you're staying productive, staying motivated, and you don't waste any time having to prepare anything because you've already made a packed lunch the day before. My penultimate tip is about staying in contact with colleagues or with friends. I know that at lunchtime or after work, a lot of people still hang out with their colleagues or with their friends. And since you're unable to do this now, I really recommend staying in contact with them. You can do this multiple ways. You can do online quizzes or you can just message them online. It just ensures that you're still staying in contact and you don't feel like you're missing out on anything that you usually would. Although you can't go out to see these friends or colleagues, it's still a really nice way to make sure that everyone stays in contact and still gets along. So some recommendations are doing quizzes, messaging online, talking about a film or TV show that you've watched, anything that you'd usually talk about, but now doing it online. This just ensures that you're still staying in contact contact with the people that you usually work with and it's actually just a really nice way to take a break from your work and your studying. And my final tip is about the end of the day. At the end of the day I know it can be really easy just to completely finish and hop back into bed or hop into the lounge 
but I really, really recommend cleaning up your workspace at the end of the day. Like I said before, preparing the meal for the next day and doing everything that you possibly can to prepare for tomorrow. It ensures that when you wake up, you can get straight down into being productive instead of having to fiddle around with what you've left the day before. So these include cleaning your area, putting away everything that you need to put away, charging your laptop, charging any technology that you usually use, preparing your lunch, like I said, and just ensuring that everything is where it's meant to be. Okay, so they were my 10 tips. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video and learnt a few more recommendations of how to best work from home. I know it can be a really daunting idea having to now work remotely because a lot of people won't have ever done it before, but these tips can hopefully show you that it doesn't have to be daunting and you can still be as productive as you would usually be. If you did enjoy this video, I'd love if you gave it a big thumbs up and subscribed and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!